I think it's super important to go into investing with the attitude of, I don't ever want to win if it means that somebody else has to lose. If both parties can't win, then I'm out. Hey everybody, welcome back to episode two. Episode one, we talked about the first couple deals I did. Today, we're gonna to talk about deal three. When it comes to deal three, it involves all sorts of things. Buying online, um, buying houses that are vacant, um, seeing them sight unseen. We're also gonna talk about land contracts. So here's my paramotor. We gotta get some things ready. Um, I have to put on my brand new speed bar. Um, this helps me cover a lot of ground. Um, don't tell my mom, she doesn't like it when I go fast, but we're gonna see if we can set some records today. Uh, we're getting ready to do a cross country today. So sometimes I just go up and fly. Sometimes I go with a very specific destination in mind. So today I'm going to go visit some friends that live maybe about 30 miles, 25, 30 miles north of here. And so I'm going to fly the whole way. My wife's going to pick me up and bring me back after dinner. So um, I'm going to get set up. We'll talk a little bit more here in a minute, but let's do it. See you in a few. Right. I am here at the field. I have pre-flighted and I'm kind of in a rush because we're running out of daylight. Um, I mean, I've got about an hour and a half to fly before I legally have to come down, but it's kind of cold, it's kind of overcast, so I'm not going to stay up any later than I have to. Um, but my machine has been warmed up. I'm going to gear up and then we'll be ready to go. All right, took us a while to get set up, but we are ready to go. Let's check our wind here one more time. Ooh, it kind of changed directions. It's coming right at me. All right, well, maybe we're going over the tennis courts. We'll see. Sometime I'll have to tell you about this new wing that I just picked up. I really, really like it. Uh, okay, I like it. All right, 15 point check after we get rolling. All right. I got a lot of gas in this tank, not very much wind. This could be a, a challenging launch, we'll see. Let's go! Hey everyone, this is Drew from the future. Uh, Drew from the past needs a few minutes to get his gloves on, get his camera set, get some altitude, and, and then he's gonna tear into some real estate info. Um, and he's gonna take you through uh, the next example um, in our portfolio, it has to do with land contracts and all of that. Um, but I recorded this video back in October of 2020, and it's now March of 21. And a lot has happened with this story ever since. Uh, it's got uh, a pretty nice, very happy ending at the end. Um, but I didn't record it back in October because it hadn't happened yet. So stay tuned for that. After Drew from the past puts his camera away, um, I'll jump back in and, and we'll talk about things uh, just real quick. So stay tuned for that. Um, also, you'll see at the end of this video, um, I've added some lights to my paramotor. Um, I think they're pretty killer. Um, some people probably think they're ridiculous, but. Um, I think they're pretty slick. So let me know what you think. I'm debating on whether to add them to my second paramotor or not. Um, but the kids liked them, family liked them. It was, it was a good time. 
The last thing I wanted to mention is I learned a lot on this flight. Um, I had mentioned before, this is a cross-country flight where you fly from point A to point B, and I covered a lot of ground this night, um, but it got dark, it got cold, it got stormy. Um, if I could do it over, I probably would do things a little bit different. So again, at the end, I'll jump back on and we'll talk about um, some of the things I've learned, some of the things I will do and won't do again in the future. So um, stay tuned. We'll talk to you here in a bit. All right, we are up and we are flying. I've got my uh, my gloves on. Uh, my legs are kind of cold and it is bumpy tonight. It's really bumpy. So if you see it go like this and the cameras jitter all over, that's because it's a little bumpy out, but that's all right. Okay, so this is episode two, like we talked about. I told you to go back and watch episode one, but I know that most of you won't. So here's the quick recap. At this point, um, I have had one rental and I've done one flip. Rental's going well, the flip went well. I had about $9,000 when I was done. So it's time to go on to deal number three. Um, but what I learned from the first two is that I really like my buy and hold real estate. I really didn't enjoy the flip. So I wanted to go buy another rental. So I let my realtor friend know that it was time for another and she went looking for me and she found another HUD house. Again, a HUD house is one that's been foreclosed on and the government owns. Uh, but this house was, it was actually right down the street from the one rental I have. Um, I'll, I'll put a picture here in the video so you can see what I'm talking about. But um, it was four bedrooms. I think it's like 2,300 square feet. Um, two car garage. You know, at the time, if it were all fixed up, it would have been worth about $125,000. And I believe this was in 2015. So I was able to buy this house uh, for $91,000, I think. And it wasn't a pretty house, but it was built really, really well. It was just another really solid house. And it only needed about $4,000 to get it, uh, you know, rent ready. So we put $4,000 in it. And I had a friend approach me who asked me, what my plan was for it. And I let him know I was going to rent it because that just seemed to be working well. And he told me that his preferred method is to do a land contract. So in Indiana and a lot of other states, uh, we call them land contracts. There's another name for them in other states, and I forget what it is. I feel like it's uh, maybe contract for deed. I'll have to look it up. I'll see if I can clarify. But essentially what it is, is I own a house, I'm a seller, and rather than rent it to someone, I'm going to sell it, truly sell it to them on a land contract, meaning we're going to agree on a sales price, we're going to agree on the rate, uh, we're going to agree on how many years it's gonna take for them to pay it off. And so maybe as you can see, it's very easy to take advantage of maybe a buyer who doesn't know that a 12% interest rate is taking advantage of someone uh, or could be considered to be taking advantage of someone. Um, there's a lot of landlords out there who will sell a house on land contract to someone and they will set them up to fail, meaning they only have 12 months, 18 months, 24 months to to pay off the entire land contract. And most people can't do that. Um, and so they lose the house and then the landlord or the investor just does it again and does it again and does it again to different people. And it's really unfortunate. It shouldn't work that way. Uh, my goal with all my properties that I sell on land contract is to truly, truly help that buyer own the house forever. I don't ever want them to have to give it back or surrender it back to me. If they do, I make more money, but I just don't think I could sleep at night knowing that I was setting people up to fail. So 
I'll come back to the deal. But as of today, I think I've done nine land contracts and five of them are still active. Four of them have finished and two of them have been successful in refinancing me out and they own it free and clear. Um, two of them decided to give the house back. Uh, they, one of them had a divorce, I think, and the other lost a job and knew that they couldn't make the payments. And it was just easier for them to give it back to me than to have to deal with foreclosure and all of that. Okay, I need to get some altitude. So we're gonna get up and we'll talk some more. Okay, so hopefully that gives you kind of an idea of what I mean by ethical investing, right? If you, I think it's super important to go into investing with the attitude of, I don't ever want to win if it means that somebody else has to lose. If both parties can't win, then I'm out. And so we, I try to teach that and, and try to promote that as much as I can. It seems intuitive to me, but it's amazing how many, how many unscrupulous people are out there. But anyways, so back to this deal. Um, I'm in it for 95. My buddy says, why don't you land contract it to someone? And here's the beauty of a land contract. When you sell it to them on land contract, you're not renting it. They own it. This is their house. And so you're not really a landlord anymore. You're much more like the bank. So just like I have a mortgage on my house and I send a payment off to Chase Bank or Wells Fargo or whoever has the note, they do the same thing for me. They make an electronic payment every month and they're responsible for mowing it. They're responsible for, you know, if little Johnny flushes a diaper down the toilet, they don't call me, they call a plumber. Um, of course, I always make myself available if they have a roof leak they can call and I'll give them the number of my roofer. Um, I want to be of service to them, but I quickly remind them, no, this is this is your house and I'll, I'll do everything I can to help, but the financial burden is on them. So if you're someone who's looking for a way to have passive income, month to month mailbox money, this can be a great way to do that. So I moved forward with that. I called my lawyer and we talked through the pros and cons and it seemed like it was gonna be a good fit. So I decided to give it a try. I found someone who was looking for a land contract and everyone's gonna to wanna to know what are my terms? You know, what do I ask? And generally speaking, what I will do is I'll set an interest rate that's about prime, the prime interest rate plus three to five points above that, which really is not too crazy. That puts people at, today that put them at about seven or eight percent. And I will typically set them up on a 30 year amortization, which means they've got 30 years to pay it off. And, um, oh, down payment, down payment's a big deal. I require no less than 10% of a down payment or 10% as a down payment where if it's $100,000 uh, that we're gonna sell the house to them for, I need uh, $10,000 down. So I found a couple who was looking to do a land contract. They were willing to pay $125,000 for this house, which was exactly what the market said it was worth. Uh, again, some sellers will try to sell that same house for a future value. I don't think that's an ethical way to go because I'm selling it today. This is today's value. And so that's how I do it. So sold it to them for 125, which means they would have needed $12,500 for a down payment. Well, this couple actually had $25,000 that they wanted to put down. So, hey, there's someone who's stopping. Uh, they had $25,000 to put down. So. They, of 125, put 25 down, and I gave them a loan for a $100,000 uh, mortgage. Now today it's 2020, uh, and they've been going for five years. The house is in impeccable shape. Uh, they have come in and they have tiled the bathrooms, they've painted every room, they've put some new carpet in, 
Uh, not everyone. You can't expect that from all your land contracts. That's been the case for some of mine, but definitely not all of mine. But they just reached out to me the other day and let me know that they are currently refinancing with the local bank, which is super exciting. And here's why. One, I want them to be successful and paying me, I think that house at that time might be at eight and a half or 9% because rates were a little higher five years ago. So that is a high rate that makes for a higher house payment. Um, and so when they refinance with a bank, they're going to get it at like three and a half percent or 3.75. I forget what it is, but that'll lower their house payment dramatically. The other big win for them is that house today is worth almost $180,000. Now, some of you say, Drew, you really messed up. You could have rented it and you could have owned this house for $180,000. And yeah, that's true. That is the case. But, oh, there's a good bump. What you have to remember is over the course of five years, I bought that house for 91 and I put $25,000 down as a down payment. So I've been paying on it for years now, and I only owe, I think I owe about 57,000. Again, at the end of this video, we'll put the numbers together. I'll show you on screen what it, the, the specific numbers look like, but I paid it down to 57. They still owe, let's call it 95, something like that. And so when they refinance me, I'll get a payday of $40,000, something like that. So I'll take that money and I'll put it straight into another investment property and I feel great about it. Um, a buyer who might not have otherwise been able to buy a house was able to buy it with my help. I made money on the deal and other than going over to visit like once a year, it's taken zero energy. Uh, they pay electronically online. Um, I mean, man, it's a piece of cake. It really, really is. So I've done a lot more land contracts. So land contracts aren't for everyone and they're not gonna be a good fit for every scenario, uh, but it's just another tool in your tool belt that I think people need to learn about and consider. Um, something to think about, you know, there's the Dodd-Frank Act, which kind of drives some of the terms that you can put on a land contract. And you need to become familiar with that because you could get in trouble, but that's why you pay a good lawyer to do good work. All right, I think I am going to get some altitude because it's getting pretty bumpy down here, but you can come along for the ride. Um, I will just enjoy the rest of the flight. Thanks guys. All right, everybody, I'm back. Uh, Drew from the future is here to help take us home on this. So here in a minute, you'll see uh, just how dicey things get uh, on this flight. Um, and, and we'll circle back to lessons learned about flying here in just a minute. But to give you the update on this land contract, um, like I mentioned, now it's six months later and this land contract buyer has been successful. Um, I introduced them to a mortgage lender at a bank that I work with and they were able to get them refinanced. So now they've got their 30 year fixed mortgage and I've been cashed out. I've been able to take that money and put it into the next deal and it's great. Everything has worked out really, really well. Um, I've actually had three more successful refinances since uh, I recorded this back in October. And so now my percentage is, I'd have to go back and do the math, but I, you know, we're up to a success rate of about probably 70, 75%. Um, and compared to the national average of 14%, where 86% of people fail their land contracts, I, I'm feeling great about that. Um, so again, land contracts probably aren't something for everyone to jump in on. Um, there are risks, there's upsides and downsides. And if you guys wanna ask questions about that, feel free to throw them in the comments or reach out directly. Um, but it's a model that works really well for me in my state with the price points of the houses uh, in, in my local market. So we're gonna keep rocking them for a while. 
Okay, so let's talk about this flight. Okay, I learned a lot, like I mentioned. A couple of key things uh, that were different about this one. So when you normally fly, I fly kind of around my launching and landing zone, right? You go up, you buzz around, you come back down and it's the same spot. So I can look at the weather around my local area and see that for the next hour or two, it's not gonna be that different. Well, in this example, um, I flew 30 miles north. Well, the weather was coming south directly at me, and what I really failed to do is look to see what the weather was going to do two or three hours into the future, 30 miles north of me. And so I flew into really sketchy, uh, very cold, rainy, uh, crappy weather. And <clears throat> normally I fly when there's tons of sun. Not a, it's not very overcast. Um, and so when the sun sets, even though the sun has set, there's still lots of daylight and you know there's enough dusk that you can see. Well, what I learned on this night is that when it's super, super overcast, the, the there's no light, like it's just gone. When the sun goes down, like it is dark. So the cameras make it look darker than it really was. I mean, I was able to see the ground. I was able to get down. Um, but if I had been closer to my, uh, my LZ, I would have landed a lot sooner than this. But I knew that I was only maybe five miles from my friend's house, so we just pushed through and we made it happen. Um, so do as I say, not as I do, stay conservative. Um, and in future times, I'll be sure to look at the weather further away from where I am. I will also know that if it's gonna be overcast, I need to schedule my time more appropriately. And if you just need to get out of the sky, put it down in a cornfield. You know, it's, it's always better to be safe than sorry. So if you made it this far, thanks for hanging around. Um, we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks guys. Mm -hmm.